it's a classic, classic, classic stamp in our career. Just the cover alone, you know what I mean? Just the big block blue letters. People see those letters, they know who it is. That's Aiden Chill. What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one, and we appreciate your support in getting us this far. Now, today for Cover Story, we have the honor and privilege of being joined by The Chill from Contents Most Wanted, among many, many other things. Chill, thanks for coming through. Always, Soren. It's always good to chop it up with you, bro. Yes. So for this episode of Cover Story, we are doing it's a Compton's thing from Compton's Most Wanted. So the first thing I remember when I got this album way back in the day when it first came out was all the colors on there. It was very colorful in a way that a lot of rap 1990-ish was not, especially with the mainly black and white cover behind it. So do you remember how and why you guys decided to have the color shaped that way? I think that was Unknown's idea, DJ Slip, for the simple fact that, you know, back in them days, you know, you had those, um, you know, African-based groups, you know what I mean? Like Poor Righteous Teachers, Public Enemy. Um, on the West Coast, we had Def Jeff, and we was all rocking the African medallions. It was the style. So I think he was catering to that, you know what I mean? And trying to kind of give it that type of edge because we had so much of a grimy you know, street gangster edge. You know what I mean? I think he was trying to break the monotony that we was about that too. Hmm. Okay. I never would have thought made that connection. So that's interesting. Now, when you're doing all that, this album came out through Orpheus Records. Um, and they you guys were one of the few people, uh, Arabian Prince, that were even on this label. So did they give you pretty much free reign creatively and artistically to do this type of stuff, or did you have to kind of go back and forth with them? Nah, it was a no-brainer. I was young, man. We probably was like 17, 16, 17, working on that record. So, you know, all me and eight wanted to do was rap. So if they was trying to direct, you know, which direction to go in, we couldn't tell. I know, you know, versus today, how we throwing up W's and videos or something simple as wearing a Raider hat or an eight situation, the San Diego, I mean, uh, L.A. Chargers hat. Um we couldn't do that back in them days, you know what I mean? You know, they'll put the tape on it or, you know, don't throw up no gang signs, don't throw up no coast signs or none of that. So, you know, um, we didn't know if we had any type of uh, create creative uh, disabilities because we was basically doing what we want to do. We'll bring a sample to unknown or slip and, you know, if it's workable, they'll flip it, you know what I mean? And we'll bust, you know what I mean? They never told us, oh, that's too much or that's too less. They pretty much let us do us. Okay. And then one of the mysteries I've always wondered about Compton's Most Wanted is with the album covers and even in the group, it seemed like people weren't really identified who's who, why are people on the cover, why are people not on the cover? So with it's a Compton thing, how did the three of y'all end up on the cover uh, the way that it ended up? That's the three original members. Me, uh, I was called the Chill MC back then, uh, MC8. And the guy that everybody think is a white guy, he's actually a mixed guy. That was the DJ. His name was Ant, Ant Capone, DJ Ant C. And that's the originals right there. We started the group. Um, Ant C, dad, is the guy on Rhymes Too Funky, the old man. Or uh, this is Compton, you know, that's him. Um, they used to basically make sure we was everywhere we had to be at the studios um, meetings, record companies or whatever. Shout out to old man Conway too. Rest in peace to him. Um, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and Ant was the DJ on the first record, but this is when we also implicated Mike T because my, uh, Ant C was more like a, he followed his dad's steps, you know what I mean? Like business-wise, you know what I mean? Like he wanted to be a briefcase type cat more than the DJ. You know what I mean? I did some scratching on that record as well as DJ Slip, but then Mike T, I think he only scratched on one record. You know, needless to say, you know, he was the DJ on that first album. Right. Yeah. So then <clears throat> do you remember how and why you guys ended up with the cover you had with like 
the way you guys were lined up or why everybody wasn't facing the camera or looking at the camera and stuff? Yeah, we was, you know, that's how you used to take pictures back in the days. You know what I mean? You don't look at the camera, the camera look at you. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's a gem about that cover if we can get off into that, if you want to get off into that. Um, we had a landmark in, in, in Los Angeles, uh, the Hearthorn area. We had the Hearthorn Mall for those from the West Coast that know about the Hearthorn Mall. And we took that picture at the Hearthorn Mall. You know what I mean? It's a kind of thing cover. It's uh, in the underground parking at the Hearthorn Mall. So that's a classic spot for a classic album. You know what I mean? And nobody never, ever would ever think that. You know what I mean? But that's exactly where we at. Me, eight, and, and, and DJ and C at the Hearthorn Mall took that picture. And it was real quick. Peter Dokus, he took the picture. A great uh, photographer. Did a lot of stuff for NWA, for us, for, you know, Cube, for, you know, a lot of the West Coast artists. Um, he did that cover, and I think Unknown told him about those colors, and he just did his thing. So shout out to Peter Dokus for that. And do you remember why the Hawthorne Mall was selected as the location? I think we just ended up there. We used to do a lot of shopping. You know, those jackets we had on, they come straight from the comp to swap meet. And, you know, we used to go up there, and the <clears throat> Asian guy used to take care of us. You know what I mean? And, you know, strike up CMW all on it and put our names on it. Eight and chill, cops most wanted, all this different stuff. If you notice, me and Eight got one, but Aunt C don't have one on. That was the coat that he had on that day. And Unknown would stick us in the Jeep with him, and we ride around. I think Unknown stayed in Hearthon or something like that at that time. Uh, I know we used to go to the bank in Hearthon, so that was the go-to spot. So I think we was just, you know, going with the flow, like, let's just take it right here at the Hearthon Mall. We didn't really had no plan in that. And that ended up being the cover. Okay. And you bring up Sam Dub, of course, one of the aliases of Compton's Most Wanted. Do you remember why you guys put both Compton's Most Wanted and Sam Dub on the cover of the album? It was sort of like, you know, we always wanted big, bold letters. You know what I mean? Like um, NWA, you know what I'm saying? But of course, they couldn't put niggas with attitude on that shit. You know what I mean? Or, you know, EPMD or BDP. You know what I mean? We put CMW, you know, we, we wanted people to know exactly what it meant. You know what I mean? So, you know, we put CMW, Compton's Most Wanted, which we got it from America's Most Wanted, the, the TV show. But we was wanted for, you know, various reasons at that time. You know, the girls like this, you know, we, we we hood rich in the hood. You know, we got these flows, you know, we busting. You know, they want it. You know what I mean? They want all this stuff. So we want to make sure that that name, now that we in this age and era, that brand got out there. You know what I mean? Compton's most wanted and those big bold letters was our logo. Okay. Cause as far as the picture and the lettering, it was striking to me because coming off the Compton compilation, which was the first time me not growing up in the LA area, got a customer knew who you guys were to see that picture where it's pretty much just a mob of y'all and you can see everybody then this one where you're kind of not seeing everybody is kind of obscured and mysterious, I guess. Did you, as a creative person yourself, what did you think of that kind of mystery or kind of uh, no pun intended unknownness of being able to see and not see the, not see the group members? You know, when you say group members, you speaking on like various pot, you know, back in the days, posse members or because Compton's most wanted was basically me and eight. You know what I mean? And if we talk about the first record, DJ SC as well. Um, DJ Slippy was from Gardena. You know what I mean? Unknowns from LA. You know what I mean? And then we implicated Boom Bam in, you know, by the time we got to uh, Music the Drive By album, uh, as well as Lil Hawk and Bird. So, you know, everybody that was on there was just basically homies from the beginning. You know what I mean? You know, kind of like that old LL look. You know, that I'm, I'm bad video. You know what I mean? You see him mobbing in the front with his posse in the back. You know what I mean? But these was all real homies, but me and eight, you know what I mean? We, we, we comped as most wanted. Okay. And then when you flip it on the back, there's that other picture of you guys behind the, the fence. So yeah. how and why did you guys decide to use that for the back cover? We just happened to be walking around the parking lot and look, it was like, let's take one right here. You know what I mean? It was that simple. It, it wasn't nothing thought out. It wasn't nothing complex to nothing. Um, actually, that's the spot where they put the trash cans at. And there wasn't no trash cans there that time. And the gate was actually open. So, you know, we took it there. It wasn't no point intended or 
nothing planned out or nothing like that. It's just a rough look. And back in those days, you wanted to have that grimy look. You know what I mean? When you think of, you know, NWA or DOS effects or something like, you know, that underground look, we want to look like we was coming from the underground because basically we was. You know what I mean? We wasn't mainstream artists. We wasn't getting a lot of radio play. You know, none of that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So we was just letting them know, you know what I mean? We from the gutter. You know what I mean? We we from the underground. You know what I mean? So that's basically what that picture stood for. You know how you get those pictures and you get the whole roll out and you pick which ones you want to use. That was definitely one that stood out. I think we used it for the single two uh, one time got for the month. Yeah. And do you remember... Um... For you, what do you think that the black and white aspect of having the the pictures in black and white meant? Like, what did that mean to you or how did it affect you? Good question. Um, I actually don't know why it was chose black and white, but I loved it. You know what I mean? It, it, to me, it, 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 you know, it was kind of bold. You know what I mean? Sort of like a picture, you know, drawn with a pen. You know what I mean? To me. You know what I mean? With an ink pen and just on a, you know, regular canvas. You know what I mean? So, you know, it looked the dope versus the color pictures looks, looks a little bit more, you know, enticing or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I said, you know what I mean? We wanted that grimy look, you know, and not that we was faking or nothing. This is who we really was. You know what I mean? So anything grimy, we was with it. You know what I mean? And back in the day, back in the day, you know, black and white was it. You know what I mean? I still do black and white videos to this day when you think of uh, motivated or, you know, different stuff like that, the new first generation video, you know, all of that type of stuff is black and white. I just think it just, it, it just puts it in your face and puts you in a zone like this is vintage, this is classic. So, yeah, again, that wasn't no point intended. You know what I mean? They brought it to us. I don't know if Unknown or Slip or Peter Dokus pulled that out the cut, but we definitely was with it. You know what I mean? Okay. So now looking back, what do you think is the legacy of It's a Compton Thing, the cover in particular? I think it's a classic, classic, classic stamp in our career. Um, just the cover alone, you know what I mean? Just the big block blue letters. Uh, when people see those letters, they know who it is. That's Aiden Chill, you know what I mean? Um, just like when you see the e EPMD logo, you know that's Eric in Paris, you know what I mean? Or, you know what I'm saying? You see that PE logo or So So Def or Def Row, you know what I'm saying? That was our stamp in the game. And it's definitely legendary for the simple fact that it wasn't a lot of people back then. You know, you had Rhyme Syndicate, you had Delicious Vinyl, you know, you had Ruthless, you know what I mean? And, you know, you had Compton's Most Wanted. You know what I mean? We was on our own 10 toes, you know what I mean? So it's definitely a classic, even the likes of the blue tape we had, because we weren't out here talking about, oh, this is Crip or this is Blood or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They pretty much put it together when they see the blue tape. There's still people today that come to me. They don't even know what the album is called. It's a Compton thing. They black the blue tape. You know what I mean? So it's definitely a stamp on West on the West Coast for this Compton hip hop. Um, and it'll go down as in history, more history as a classic, a cold classic. Absolutely, man. Definitely. So chill. Thanks for coming through the cover story, man. Appreciate it. No doubt, man. 100.